NFL on 5 Live Sports Extra. The road to Super Bowl 50 continues. The ball is loose, it's bubbled, it's picked up, and going the other way. Big sets, throws, end zone. Oh, baby, what a catch! It's the first round of the playoffs in the NFL as the Washington Redskins host the Green Bay Packers at FedEx Field. That's our live game of the week. Coverage starts Sunday night at 7.30. NFL on the UK's only 100% live sports channel. 5 Live Sports Extra. On DAB Digital Radio, Digital TV, downloads and online. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Up all night with Rod Sharp. Well, you never know what you're going to find when you go digging in some places. And the remains of a Revolutionary War era ship have been uncovered beneath a hotel construction site outside Washington, D.C. This is the second archaeological find in the area in weeks. John Mullen from Thunderbird Archaeology is in charge. Hello, John. Uh, good evening. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. It's lovely to have you with us. Now tell us what you found. Well, we have actually been working out at this site for uh, since September, and uh, we were wrapping up our excavations out there within three days of our, uh, our last uh, uh, test trench, and we found uh, the remains of a large uh, sailing vessel dating to the uh, late 18th century. Sounds very good. Um, there would be, of course, plenty of those boats around at the time, wouldn't there? Because they were a primary means of getting around. Well, definitely. Actually, um, the the point of land that we're excavating on right now was one of the earliest developed in the city of Alexandria uh, in Virginia. And it also had a, uh, uh, a ship builder uh, located across the street from us. So it's possible that this ship might have even been built in Alexandria. Uh, so right now we have a team of experts out there uh, researching uh, the ship, documenting the ship to, to try to find out all the information that we can, uh, dendrochronology to date the ship, uh, find out where the timbers came from. Um, and it's possible that they could come from Europe or they could come from North America. So it's, it's pretty exciting find for us. Quite. Any guesses as, as to the fate of the ship? I mean, was it maybe sunk on its maiden voyage just as it came down the slipway? Anybody know? Well, ba based on uh, where we've located it, uh, we're pretty sure that they purposely placed it there as a framework for infilling the Potomac River and expanding the land that they had uh, uh, further out into the river. Um, the town of Alexandria allowed the people that lived along the waterfront to fill in the mud flats that were basically along the banks of the Potomac River. Uh, and any reclaimed land they had, they could keep for their own. So there was an economic incentive for those people that owned uh, you know, land along the waterfront to, to fill that in so that they could build their own wharfs and get their own ships to, to trade with. Right, so. and th and this would be after the the war with uh, Britain was over, would it? Well, it, this this could be uh, while uh, Virginia was still a colony. Uh, we don't know exactly when uh, the ship actually dates to when it when it was sailing around in the Chesapeake uh, uh, Bay, and it's possible that the ship could have made uh, transatlantic voyages. Uh, that that's part of uh, you know some of the research really? that we were hoping to to answer research questions. So, so yeah. it was big enough for that, was it? This wasn't just a coastal trader. Well, the the ship is very well constructed, uh, according to the experts. I mean, so it was carrying either heavy cargo, and there there is a slight possibility that it, it was a military ship. I mean, it, it's got some unique characteristics to it. Um, but we do have evidence of uh, shipworm damage on some of the external planking, which, which indicates that it was sailing through salt water, at least. And that could be, you know, brackish water from down in the Chesapeake Bay or along the coast. Um, but it could have made, you know, trips across the Atlantic or even down to the Caribbean. We, we just don't know yet. So You don't know. And of course, if it was going to the Caribbean, it, was, it could have been a slaving ship. It could possibly have been. Now, we only have about like 30 to 40 percent of the ship, and we only have the starboard side um, as well. But um, I guess based on the research that we did out there today, we're still documenting the, the ship. 
we have about 50 feet of the ship, and it might have been slightly bigger, but it was probably still uh, a two-mast ship. Um, so if it was put down there deliberately, the one, one thing we could be sure of is not, no artifacts with it. Nobody's left anything in it well, when they sunk it. We are screening, hoping to find any artifacts that might have been uh, related to the use of the ship. Right now, what we're finding in terms of, uh, you know, bottle glass and ceramics and, and other artifacts such as uh, uh, kaolin pipe stems uh, might might just date to the infilling of, of and the sand and the sediments when they when they're dumping trash, you know, into the river at that point from the residents of Alexandria. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what kind of a, a place was Alexandria at that time? Was it uh, prosperous? Uh, it was just beginning. I mean, the town was founded in 1749, and uh, the very first thing they did was start improving this one little patch of land that we're working on. Uh, they, they constructed a public warehouse in 1755, uh, and we did locate the warehouse as well on the property, uh, just about uh, 50 feet away from where the ship is. So we know the ship was in place uh, prior to 1798. Well, it, we leave you with all your uh, interesting discoveries and, and hope that you can put it all together, John. Thank you very much. Oh, definitely. Thanks, Thanks for uh, talking with me. Let's go to Los Angeles now. Uh, where uh, many people had looked forward to the boy child, El Nino, delivering them for years of drought that had left the state desperately short of water. 